Yo, what's up? Good morning, good morning. It's been a while. It feels like it's been a long time. Uh, how is everybody? It's good to see you. It's good to be back. Uh, Tuesday, May 31st. Had a couple of rough past days, man. Uh, not still totally over this thing, but uh, much better than I was the past two days anyway. So we're getting there. We're getting there. It's good to see you guys. Apologize for the stream being down the past couple of days, but I was pretty beat up with this sickness, man. So I uh, felt like the best thing I could do was try not to power through it anymore and just rest up as much as possible and try to get back here. Wick, what's up, buddy? How are you? Looking super cute today, Wick. Looking super cute, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still a little bit sick. Yeah, still a little bit. This has been a rough one, man. It's been rough. Uh, how you been, buddy? Um, so we'll play Valheim today. Yeah. Uh, I guess uh, I've kind of come to the decision that uh, we were we're no longer going to do Lost Ark weekends. I don't think. Uh, no more Lost Ark. Um, even though I'm still enjoying the game, it doesn't feel like uh, the community is enjoying that content very much. Uh, the people that were playing the game with us uh, aren't really playing anymore. And so we'll just uh, pivot. We'll find something else to play, something the community is more interested in being a part of. And and uh, maybe we'll try to turn the uh, the weekend content into more community friendly games you know some of the stuff we already have and and uh, whatever else we can get into just to have some fun and, and make the weekends community based gaming stuff okay but uh, I think we're gonna be done with Lost Ark I think that's finished so uh, it was fun while it lasted and uh, that's just kind of the way it's gonna go a lot of times right we play games and and uh, eventually I blame pinky too yeah we'll have to get a blame pinky command for sure uh, how you been, buddy? How you been? Uh, so there's that. Um, I don't know if I have much else. We'll keep doing Valheim today and uh, see where we get. Um, I don't know how much longer we'll play Valheim either. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And we'll try to start, I guess, uh, progressing through these bosses kind of maybe as fast as we can uh, just to see if we might be able to get some other content in before we hit uh, Planescape at the end of the month. Tired? Yeah, I hear you, buddy. I hear you. Uh, and that's literally all I've done over the past two days is just sleep, man. I've just been in bed like the past two days. Totally. It's been rough, man. But I hope your day gets better. Sorry you're tired, man. So let's uh let's do what we do. Let's let's hop in here, see what we can find out that I've missed over the past uh two, two and a half days of uh video gaming news. So I do apologize to anybody that was, you know, that's looked forward to the content and stuff like that. I just, uh, I tried to power through those first three days and it just got worse and worse. And, uh, it just made sense to go ahead and not stream for the past couple of days, try to get over it. So I do apologize out of town again for a couple of days. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Understandable. Understandable. Sorry, man. Uh, well touch base on discord or something maybe. Okay. Let's do this. Let's get into our gaming news. How about that? How's work been, buddy? Did you get your new manager on now? You should have, right? New manager should be on at this point, yeah? France bans English gaming tech jargon and push to preserve language purity. Okay.
<laughs> what? I don't I don't think I want to go with the Guardian. Let's go with uh Let's go with Engadget. Let's read Engadget's uh article regarding this. So they've banned terms like esports and streaming. Okay. Are they taking away french fries too? Uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons will be unplayable in 38 years. Okay. Still in training. Right on. Cool. Is it working out okay so far though? Uh, this is a potential. We'll look at this. Fifteen incredible indie games to slam on your wish list. We love indie games, man. We love indie games. We love indie devs. So let's see if we can't take a look at that and maybe help some indie devs out with a little bit of promotion there. Uh, Embracer Group announces Games Archive to preserve gaming history. If you're not, uh, if you don't recall, Embracer Group is the, uh, they are the devs that, that bought out Square Enix. Uh, Square Enix is North American uh, development studios as well as the IPs for Tomb Raider, Deus Ex, and uh, Thief, yeah? So, let's see what that's about there. Okay, uh, looks like Diablo Immortal isn't going to be released in Belgium or the Netherlands? Really? We'll see what that's about. Okay. We'll see what this is about. Blue Ocean Gaming teams it up with uh, Spearhead Studios. Let's see what this is going on about. Um, see if they've released any new free uh, uh, uh or new games are going to be on PS Plus we haven't heard about yet. Probably go four deep today since we haven't been in here. For a few days, anyways. It hurts to swallow. Oh, man. This is that Blue Ocean Gaming and Spearhead Studios. We've already got that up. Ugh. All right, let's pivot over, take a look at our other search. Whew. We don't, I don't think we have this up yet. Let's take a look at this. Report Blast Manipulative Video Game Loot Boxes. Let's see what that's about.
I'm not going to dive into this. We've talked about this a lot. But this is just so what I expect out of this country. Uh, Ted Cruz blames violent video games for mass shootings while speaking at an NRA convention. The NRA is going to blame anything they can other than the people responsible and guns. You know? Yeah, we've already got that up. Blizzard boss says Warcraft 3 Reforged news is coming after a year of silence. Let's see what that's about. We talk about this a lot. I mean, there there are so many great ways in which video games help people, you know. Even though everybody's trying to blame uh, world violence on them right now, again, for the, you know, millionth time, only to have that myth debunked. For the millionth time. Yeah, this is about the unionization. We're already aware of that. We've already got something up about the new PS Plus games that have been revealed. Oh, Vario, what's up, my friend? Hey, how are you? Feels like a long time. Feels like a long time, buddy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> How you been? Go one more page. I've been, since we haven't done news in two days, over two days, I'm going to keep, keep going into four pages today. I hope the new Gollum game is good. We've been following that for a while, and I, I hope it's a good, uh, it just seems like a real, inter even if you're not a fan of Gollum, it, it seems like a real interesting spinoff that obviously hasn't been done before in, in the uh, world of video games. Everybody wants to, uh, you know, follow the, the uh, traditional hero protagonist type characters in those stories, and and uh, I think it's a really cool way uh, to, to address the stories and, and knowing what Smeagol or Gollum uh, was up to the entire time, you know? It's pretty neat. Waiting for some... Oh, dude. I'm sorry, man. Yeah, hold up. Hold up. Let me uh, let me finish this page and I'll get it going. I'm sorry, man. <clears throat> I'm so out of it still. Give me a second. I'll have it up. Uh, I apologize. I haven't even had the PC on the past two days at all. I'm 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 so out of it right now. This has been a rough one, man. Been rough. Okay. Give me one second, guys. <clears throat> Let me get this server up for all of our friendos to get in here and play. <laughs> One moment, let's take two minutes, and we'll keep pressing.
Oh. Everybody's uh jonesing out for some Valheim man on the server because I haven't been live for two days, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even start it up this morning. <clears throat> All right. Hoping I'm loud enough. Uh, Better-ish. Better-ish, yeah. I, I think I'm finally trending up. Um, it's been rough. This is like on par with how I felt like right before I decided to take time off, you know. And, uh, I thought this was going to be the worst of it, feeling like this. Uh, should be up, guys. Should be up. I apologize. Should be up. All right, let's get back into this. There we go. So, uh, yeah. <clears throat> I was not feeling great, obviously. Uh, like, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and um, then Sunday and yesterday <clears throat> were just like splitting headaches, tons of congestion. Couldn't swallow very well. So much just sore throat drainage, and uh, it was it was pretty brutal. I thought I thought the first three days of it, you know, only feeling like that for the th first three days. I thought it was going to be the extent of it, and I was going to start working my way back out of it. And and uh, I got I got tricked by the sickness, man. It just got kind of worse over the past two days. Uh, pretty nasty, and and uh, I literally was just in bed. Uh, the past two days, totally just trying to drink as many fluids as possible. And, and, uh, I don't know. It sucks, man. It sucks. I haven't been sick like this in a long time. So, uh, I don't know, but I'm back. Uh, I don't feel super great this morning, but, uh, well enough, <laughs> well enough. Thanks for asking Varya. But the uh, the server should be up. I apologize, guys. I apologize. I'm still like, just my head is just so clogged up. Ah. Okay. Uh, let's let's work our way through these articles here. Okay. France officially bans English gaming terms like esports and streaming. Uh, streamer is now un juillet and direct and esports is je video de competition i probably butchered that i'm not french man i can't speak french but uh okay english jargon has invaded every corner of france causing consternation among language purists a trade fair popular with politicians during election season is called Made in France. For example, despite widespread usage in business and elsewhere, the government has decided to pick on gaming, officially banning terms like streamer and cloud gaming, according to AFP. Going forward, the far more convoluted terms, uh, joyeux, or joyeux, joyeux, is it joyeux, uh, animateur indirect, and uh, je vidéo en nuage must be used for any government communications. This is wild. The changes were made in consultation with France's Ministry of Culture, which has in the past touted the gaming industry as a French economic success story. However, it told the AFP it's, it's concerned that English terms could be a barrier to understanding for non-gamers. That's a solid point, as I can attest that many French non-gamers wouldn't have a clue what a term like streaming means. France's language keepers... Uh, also expressed concern about English jargon in gaming, having published a lexicon of alternate French terms back in 2017. Changes were issued in the government's official journal, meaning they they are binding on all government workers. 
However, it's hard to see them catching on in daily use or even on French websites or newspapers. Previous efforts by uh, the L'Académie Française uh, to replace anglicisms have not gone well. Yeah, I know. That's I'm going to comment on this in just a moment. Um, it's attempt to get people to use uh, access sans fil à internet instead of le Wi-Fi failed completely, as the local France points out. So I can understand to an extent. Solely due to uh, this. Like uh, the fact that they, you know, it's a trade fair popular with politicians. They are trying to cater to the fact that there could potentially be a lot of individuals uh politicians that that are not gamers and wouldn't understand right but there are plenty of people i'm sure that can I explain to them what those terms mean right um on the flip side there have been so many right right yeah well i mean they've even given examples of why this kind of thing hasn't worked in the past, right? And another thing is, um, you know, I don't really, I, I mean, I guess I, you know, it's, it's their language, right? France, French is their language. They want to try to retain that uh, purity, I guess, of, of their home uh, tongue. And, um, but there there have been so many great uh things about gaming it just in regards to how people have learned how to speak other languages just because of video gaming right so uh instead of looking at it as a bad thing i i would say why not embrace it and and instead of like banning the words just try to um, if, if you're that concerned about preserving, um, your language in regards to a lot of tech jargon, uh, try to embrace it and incorporate it in a way which, uh, you know, teaches people how to use those terms in your native language instead of going, it's banned, it's bad, it's, you know, it's like, it, I, I agree, I don't think it's going to work like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Varya, that's funny. That's funny. I, I didn't know that. I I took a little bit of French in high school. I actually think it's a beautiful language, but I, I, I believe you. Yeah, no, I totally believe you. I totally believe you. Yeah, yeah, I believe you 100%. Um, I enjoy the French language very much. I suck at it, <laughs> but I, I think it's beautiful. Um, but, um, I don't know. I mean, I feel like they're, they're, they're just trying to hinder something that won't really work, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it also didn't German's so much more fun. I would love to learn German as well. I, uh, to be fair if, in high school, I, I was not, uh, the greatest student in the world. I pulled pretty good grades, but I did not care very much either. <laughs> so I was that kid. I was that kid. So I don't know, but I, I find this a bit wild and I don't know that it's going to work too well. Really? Again, uh, that's another just great thing about video games is how it has helped people come together and learn languages together uh, to try to better communicate, right? And that's, that's amazing. And 
um, instead of focusing on that fact and saying, let's embrace the English terms that have become so popular and try to incorporate them to our native language to preserve a bit of, you know, that they're, they're just, it's banned, you can't use them. Yeah, it doesn't seem like the right way to go about it, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Okay. Anybody, if you're planning on playing Animal Crossing New Horizons, you've only got 38 more years to take advantage of it, okay? Speaking with Lego, <laughs> lots of small words smashed together, entertaining when you're a kid, <laughs> make, making learning it more fun, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, that's wild. Oh, cool, man. Well, there's uh, actually supposed to be a decent amount of uh, my ancestry that, that on my dad's side anyways, that comes from Germany. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely a mutt. I'm definitely a mutt, but I've always uh, wanted to go check out Germany and, and uh, you know, I've, I've always thought the, the, the German language was pretty neat. Uh, just listening to it, you know, so. All right, sorry guys. Yo, ma'am's out. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> yeah, very. That's funny. Hey, ma'am'sel, how are you, my friend? I'm okay. I'm okay. Uh, I'm. I'm. I think I'm starting to work my way out of it a little bit. Uh, that's what I was saying earlier. Was uh, you know, those first three days where I was still streaming and and I wasn't feeling real great. I thought that was going to be the extent of it, but instead of like starting to feel better, I just like took a dive, uh, between Saturday and Sunday, man. And, uh, like throat just hurt so bad. I could barely swallow and, and, um, uh, just super congested to where my head felt like I was, it was just splitting into the past couple of days, man. So, uh, well, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I, I, I woke up, I don't feel fantastic by any means, but I feel better than I did the past two days. And, and I hate, I hate not streaming, man. I really do. Um, it drives me crazy to not be live and hanging out with you guys and, and enjoying what I love to do. So, um, I felt like I needed to at least, I, I'm still really tired, man. Um, you know, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, I, I still, I want to go for a while today anyways. And, and I'll, I might go, I might end a little bit earlier than we usually do on the weekdays. And um, just so I can get a little bit more rest. That's all I've been doing the past two days is sleeping. So, um, but I, you know, let me, let me say this. Uh, you guys are so amazing at just being understanding about, you know, me having to take the past two days off. And, and uh, you know, I, that means so much to me. Uh, putting it out on the socials and having people say, you know, take care of yourself. It's okay. It'll be all right. You know, I feel so bad not being here. And, um, obviously, you know, the first three days of feeling bad, I, you know, I tried to power through it and everything. And, and then the past two days were just, uh, I, I knew I needed to rest. I need, I, I was not going to be uh, a very good broadcaster or streamer. Uh, I could, you know, my throat hurt so bad and, and my head was killing me and stuff. And, but you guys just being so, uh, you know, kind and, and accepting of the fact that I needed to take some time off. I really appreciate that. It means a lot to me. Um, but it's good to see you, my friend. Yeah, so, so Animal Crossing, if you're, gonna, if you're interested in playing Animal Crossing New Horizons, um, you've only got 38 more years to take advantage, okay? Only 38 more years to take advantage of Animal Crossing New Horizons. And then you won't be able to play it anymore. So you, 
hurry up and hop in there. Um, running out of time. Running out of time, guys. Uh, <laughs> I'm being sarcastic. If you're still playing your Nintendo Switch in 2061, it might be time to upgrade. I don't know. I mean, we still go back and play all of our, our old consoles and stuff, right? So, we'll see. Animal Crossing New Horizons will stop players from accessing their islands in 2061. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, 38 years from now. As discovered by a fan and shared in the Animal Crossing New Horizons subreddit. <coughs> excuse me. Nintendo has set a limit on the number of years Nintendo Switch users can play Animal Crossing New Horizons. After assumingly setting the date of the console to 38 years in the future, the player below attempted to boot up the Island Getaway game only to see a message which read, Please close the game from the home menu and restart after setting a date between 1-1-2000 and 31 2060 Really? Are you serious? Are you? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure, Mamzel. Uh huh. Yeah. Hey, gamer, what's up, buddy? Well, I know that. I know that. I mean, I agree. Why? <laughs> you know. I guess it's not a matter of me feeling like you guys wouldn't understand. It's just you being supportive, right? I know. I, I know. It's not that. It's not that as much. It, you know, I, I feel that need to be here all the time. And I want to be here all the time. I, I love doing this. I love hanging out with you guys. I love, uh, you know gaming with you guys and this is this is my passion so um it, it's more of a uh just a, a kudos to you guys for making me feel like uh it's okay to not be here if if uh if i'm needing to rest and and not feeling well right i mean i try to be here all the time uh consistently and when i'm not able to be here when i i have to take time off it feels bad to me. It makes me feel bad, you know? Uh, and so just knowing that you guys understand, uh, it means a lot to me really is what I'm trying to get across. Hey, Mr. Overthinker, what's up, buddy? So I just, I just want you guys to know that I appreciate you, uh, you know, being there for me and, and, uh, making me feel like it's okay because, uh, I, it does make me feel very bad. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Vary. <Ow. laughs> That's funny, Varya. That's funny. Overthinker. Uh I'm I'm getting there, buddy. I'm getting there. The past couple of days were pretty rough. Pretty rough. Um just real, real intense, uh nasty headaches, man, and and uh basically like two days worth of headache. It just felt like my head was splitting in two and, and real bad sore throat and stuff. So uh, but I definitely woke up feeling better today and all I've done is sleep, man, the past couple of days. That's all I've done is sleep. So I've just been trying to rest and drink as many fluids as possible. And, and, uh, so, uh, I think I'm finally, uh, getting over that hump as it were and, and starting to progress. I don't want to speak too soon. That's what I, I mean. I really thought the first three days were going to be the worst of it. And, uh, Man, Sunday and yesterday really just uh I was I was beat up pretty bad. But it's good to see you guys. Yeah. Thanks for asking, Mr. Overthinker. Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, I mean obviously I mean that's why I took the days off. That's why I took the days off. It it became very apparent that I needed to just rest, you know, and so uh, as much as I hate not being here, it it was uh needed. It was definitely needed. If you do happen to be still playing Animal Crossing New Horizons in 2061, don't panic. You can always just rewind time on the console and get another 60 years worth of island fun, fun from the game. See, this is... Having expiration dates in games is, is odd. Right? Does anybody else find that odd? I mean, if you remember here recently, 
uh, PlayStation was having, or, or Sony, Sony and PlayStation were having some real issues with um, some of their older, like PS1 and PS2 titles that people owned. Um, and even though people owned them, they weren't able to start these games up because they were showing an expiration date of like 1970. And because of that, it wouldn't let people play these games. And so, I, I mean, I'm not a game dev. I don't quite understand. I mean, I, obviously, the need for like time and date in the games, uh, especially nowadays with the cycles that are put into the games for actual day and night to coincide with real life and stuff like that. Um, it, you know, I understand the need for it, but actual expiration dates on the game is, uh, you know, I'm not sure. Uh, I understand wholly what the, the, the need is there for that and why it would be a situation like this. Yeah. I mean, we're kind of memeing out a little bit overthinker. The, the title of this is that, if, if uh, you're interested, you know, <laughs> Animal Crossing New Horizons will be unplayable in 38 years, right? Because of these inherent, like, dates they put into the games. And you can see right here that uh, basically somebody found out, excuse me, sorry, that the game has, like, this expiration date set of, like, 2060, you know? I just don't, I don't know why. That seems weird to me. And that's just because maybe I don't understand exactly what the, the, uh, the requirement is there. But seems odd. Also extremely unlikely, uh, or excuse me, it's also extremely likely uh, we would have all moved on by then, though. Playing with a new Nintendo console several generations in the future. If anything, it could mean we should expect at least one new Animal Crossing game at some point in the next three, four decades. So, like, well, okay, here's the thing, though. We all, it, gamers, we love our old games. Just because there's a new one doesn't mean we don't still want to go back and play the old one, right? And that's one area where Nintendo has really, really felled the gaming community as of late is... Uh, getting us access to those old games, right? So I know they're kind of memeing out here, but they are also kind of missing the point here. Although you'll still be able to visit your island for another 38 years, Nintendo has officially stopped rolling out free new content for Animal Crossing, as revealed during Animal Crossing Direct last October. We got a ton of new features in the game, including the Roost Cafe, Cap and Boat Tours, Harv's Island, and more. But Nintendo says this will be the last free major content update for the game. In another Animal Crossing, uh, in other Animal Crossing New Horizons news, Nintendo has revealed it is releasing a real-life Critterpedia. Yo, this is actually really cool, but only in Japan, right? Yeah, this is so weird. This is really neat, and I, I'm really surprised that they didn't decide to release this like worldwide. Uh, we read about this earlier. Um, the encyclopedia was designed to educate kids about the world's ecosystem, including all the fish, bugs, and sea creatures you can catch in New Horizons. Unfortunately, it looks like the book and accompanying DVD won't be released outside of Japan. The newer generations don't go back to... That's a shame, man. This is, this is the thing, though. That is a shame because if it weren't for the older games... Right? If it weren't for our video gaming history, we would not be where we are right now in the industry. Um, so I hope that trend changes. I can tell you this. My kids, um, <clears throat> while obviously not like they don't have the extensive understanding and experience with older games like I do, uh, they definitely have that. My son will just like hop on the PS3 occasionally and play Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which is a game that made me fall in love with Metroidvanias back on PS1. You know, I have a digital copy on my PS3. He'll just pop it out every once in a while and just play it. And uh, he's beat the game. He loves it. 
you know. Um, and I have uh, the original Legend of Zelda on our Wii that we still have hooked up. You know, I've got a digital copy of that uh, that he, he always loved to play and my kids love to play. Um, so I think it's a shame. If that's, if that's, if that's really true, um, and obviously I know it's, it's easier for, it's harder for kids to get into those older games because they didn't grow up with them. So when they're all, always exposed to these new amazing games that are being released, going and taking a look and a play at, at games that, uh, are old and don't have that visual, uh, gravity to, 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 you know, really bring kids new, new, uh, new generation of, of kids into playing those games. That's tough. I can understand that. Um, I think the thing that is saving us a little bit on that front is the fact that, uh, a lot of game devs nowadays are using old art styles for the games, you know, and that could help a little bit, but I understand why, but it's a shame nonetheless, I think. So, uh, I, um, we might need to look more into what, what it is about devs putting these expiration dates on games, what, what that's about, why it's required or needed and, and, um, We've just seen a lot of issues with this over the past uh, couple of years, and, and I'm not sure what, what the requirement is behind it. Uh, let's take a quick look here. Um, we love indie devs, right? We love indie devs. We want to support indie devs. If there were, if there, I mean, the way it seems nowadays, right, is that, um, most of the big devs have lost sight of creating great content, great games with, with a focus on, uh, creating good content and a focus on us as the, the consumer, the gamers, the lover, uh, lovers of video games and, and, and providing us, you know, having a focus on, on us and the game itself, right? Um, uh, where we've been saved so many times is the fact that we have these indie developers that have not lost sight and they create these amazing experiences. Uh, I mean, we could go on and on. And um, I think it's important that we continue to uh, support these developers. And, and I mean, you even see, I mean, obviously there's going to be a amount of these indie developers that uh, turn into big devs and, and potentially fall out like a lot of the other big devs but then you know we've also got uh a lot of these devs that that opt to stay small and still create great games and and uh we couldn't be more fortunate to have them in the industry yo it's uh it's rando mode time guys get your rando mode in there all right what is that fish moly oh that is disgusting yuck dude what the crap Oh, nice, Overthinker. Check that out. Nice. Jamming out, Overthinker. I like it. Um, I mean, there are there are all kinds of examples out there. Uh, what's the uh, ape uh, made Stardew Valley making a new game, Haunted Chocolatier? And he is a single dev. Uh, nobody else on that team. Just that dev. Uh, a single person. And, you know... As successful as Stardew Valley is, um, there's no doubt that that individual could have created a team, started a business, and gotten bigger. And um, but he he stuck to his roots, continued to making uh, has created an, an amazing game over the past ten years of Stardew Valley, and is moving on to a new title similar to Stardew Valley uh, to bring us. Uh, that passion and, and joy and love in, in, uh, what was so apparent through, through the first game that was made, you know? So on that note, let's see what we have here. 15 incredible indie games to slam on your wish list. Metroidvanias, adventure, shoot 'em ups, deck builders, and that's just one game. No, seriously. Okay. Let's take a look. Uh, you can have some water in the afternoon if you're quiet. I'm sorry. You've caught me just cramming the last of the Kotaku team in the holiday closet. As they rest and recuperate in tangled proximity, I have control of the site 
and as such can write about indie games no one's heard of yet and use proper words like cup cupboard instead of closet, whatever those are. Below is a randomly selected batch of forthcoming indie games from the hundreds emailed to, in to me over the weekend. Unless otherwise stated, I've not played them, and so do, don't do vouch for them all. But goodness me, look what a fantastic mix of intriguing ideas are coming up. Make sure to stick with anything you like the look of on your Steam wishlist. This is one of the most practical ways you can support these games before their release. I've made this a slideshow because it seems the nicest way to present them, rather than an overlong list. No whining. Let's take a look here. Shadows of Doubt. Uh, I love going through the emails I receive when I do these indie call-outs and reading a sentence like, A procedurally generated... Oh, yo, I love this. Procedurally generated worlds I fell in love with um, back in like the Diablo... Like, so Diablo 1 had um, like kind of randomly procedurally generated dungeons and everything and uh so every time you played the game the, the layouts of the dungeons and levels and stuff were always completely different uh well almost completely different and uh that's where i started falling in love with that mechanic yo psych what's up buddy hey thanks man i'm getting there dude <laughs> i'm getting there buddy <laughs> past couple of days were really rough but uh, again, shout out to all of you for making me feel like it was okay to take some time. I, I hate it. I hate not being here. And uh, everybody was so kind and, and um, understanding. And, you know, it just, it makes me at least feel a little bit better about not being here whenever I can't be, you know. So thank you guys. Yeah. Um, how are you doing, buddy? How's your trip going? Uh. Procedurally generated open world detective game in a sci-fi noir setting where the whole world is constantly simulated. By the way, uh, yeah, aren't you and Mamzelle supposed to be meeting up? Like, friendly meetup kind of thing? By the way, Psyche, I was trying to read some French earlier in the, the segment, dude. You would have just absolutely been hee-hawing, I'm sure. <laughs> I was trying to read some French and it was not going very well. <laughs> no surprise, right? No surprise. You and Mamzelle both. I don't think Mamzelle was here yet either. Uh, you both would have been absolutely just like appalled, I'm sure. Uh, that's Shadows of Doubt, which is somehow almost all the work of one guy. Concrete Jungle creator Cole Jeffries. It's a game about being a PI in a beautiful voxel city populated by uniquely generated NPCs. And having to, having watched the video above, which I implore you to do too, I want to play this so much. Yeah, where's my date? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I didn't think you were here either, Vanzel. Yeah. Yeah, you guys you guys would have been just hee-hawing about how terrible my, my French was. I know it. I know it. Oh man. Um, I'm going to read through these. I'm not, I'm not going to watch every single, because that would really drag out the new segment. Okay. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and link this. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. You'll, you'll, you'll enjoy it. You make fun of me tomorrow. Yeah. Watch the VOD. Yeah. Make fun of me tomorrow. <laughs> um, but if you guys want to watch, I'm just going to read about all of these. If you're interested in any of them, there's the link in chat so you can go take a look, okay? Um, and maybe watch the video and, and find a new indie game you love, potentially, all right? Okay, let's uh, let's move on to the next one. Is that Shadows of Doubt? Elementalist. Developer, Ivan Ruiz Lozano. Uh... With a very welcome 2D Zelda vibe, Elementalist is a top-down RPG in which you use elemental abilities to fight enemies, solve puzzles, and work on stopping an apocalypse you set in motion. Honestly, you. There are dungeons to gain new abilities, uh, elemental abilities, real-time fights with elemental spells, and, well, you know, it's Zelda, and God knows we need more de decent Zelda. Yeah, can't have enough uh, decent Zelda-like. Yep. 
Oh. Crawl Yard. Crawl Yard. Oh, look at this. Little deck building game, yeah? Isn't Crawl Yard a fantastically insidious sounding name? It's tricky to uh, marry it to the cheerful cartoon graphics of the game, but then that seems very much the theme here. This is a dungeon battler, but played as a roguelite deck builder with elements of Dungeon Keeper. Developer Pigeon Eye Games calls it a combination of Slave Aspire and Action RPG with the rather sinister sounding collection of puppet parts that augment your style. Huh. <laughs> Do what? Oh, oh, I really thought you guys were going to try to meet up. I know asyak has been busy seeing family and stuff, but yeah, I thought you guys were going to try to meet up. Weren't you supposed to be going and getting food? Wasn't that the thing? Don't you, didn't Mamzelle's, uh, don't you have some kind of awesome restaurant? Weren't we talking about that? I thought that was the play. What were we talking about? Yo, this is actually crawl yard. I'm gonna pull this up real quick. Oh, check it out. Huh. Oh, the microbrewery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know you're just messing around with him. That would be cool for you guys to meet up though, if you could. I just know that, you know, he's been, I understand like how quick time goes. Cause I haven't lived back home for a long time now and I don't, I don't go home very often. It's not my kind of place, but my, all my, like my extended family is all there. So we go back and visit occasionally and, um, you know, time just goes like that, man. It's, it just goes so fast. Hey, there you go. Yo, this looks like it could be pretty wild. Cool. I'm going to add it in there. Keep looking. Um, oh, man. Next slide. Nobody's Quest. Dude, this is totally uh, Pokemon. <laughs> Look at this. This looks just like Pokemon. Old school Pokemon games, dude. Uh, to me, this looks like Zelda meeting Animal Crossing, a 2D top-down RPG in which you play someone of... So little substance that at the start of the game, you don't even have a corporal form. What intrigues me here is the open nature of it all, letting you play through its story at your own pace, with the world expanding around you as you earn thank you points. Thank you points. The whole game is designed to be presented uh, simply, without an overwhelming UI, needlessly complex systems, etc. All in the name of making something that lets the player focus on adventuring. Cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, Mr. Overthinker, about that looking like Pokemon. It looked like the old Pokemon games, huh? Yeah, it's funny. What is this, dude? What is this? Developer Sam Stubbings. Uh, what's the name of this? Life Not Supported. My ideal survival sims are those set in incredibly restricted spaces. Life Not Supported certainly seems to fit that bill. Since you start stranded on an exploded space station... Orbiting a planet that was uh, potentially a new home for humans. So with the floaty bits of scrap and some uh, the Martian-like ingenuity, uh, you attempt to build yourself a ship in which you can survive. In fact, solo developer Sam Stubbing says the game is inspired by one of my all-time favorite restricted survival games, Raft. Oh, really? Yo, we've been playing a little bit of Raft. Cool. Right on. Huh. That's wild. Neat. Lost Twins. Yeah. I highly recommend you watch the trailer for Lost Twins just above these words. Uh, firstly, because it's so very, very pretty. But secondly, for the moment where a lovely looking puzzle platformer becomes fascinating when the rooms of the house in which the game is played are moved around by the player in order to solve puzzles. This, from Pakistani developers Playdo, is one of those single player co-op games where you control two characters to achieve goals, and it looks just gorgeous. Cool.
Yeah, it does look pretty good. Oh. Yo, why is this playing? What? Did I not say? There we go. That was weird. Garden Inn. Um, dramatic iceberg developer. A shoe in for wholesome games attention. Garden Inn is about is a game about indoor gardening, aiming for a peaceful pace and relaxing vibe. This is simply about caring for your seeds, cross pollinating your plants, watching your potted plants grow all inside a room of your own design and decor. Yo. I bet my daughter would really like this. I gotta look this up. Oh yeah. He loves plants. And designing stuff. So, uh... You heard me talking about it. <laughs> she heard me she heard me talking about a game she might like and she had to come check it out. <laughs> Neat. All right. Doki Toki. Time slows down when you're in when you're love? In love. It's supposed to be in love, yeah. Uh Flip Alive Games, a first-person time-manipulating room escape puzzle uh, game set in a school and also a love story. Indie games, Doki Toki. Uh, time Slows Down When You're In Love is implausibly, given the title, is about freezing objects in time in order to reach a room's exit in time. But then that's combined with a dating sim uh, VN and the dev promises no sudden dark twists looks superbly bonkers to me. All right. Get a cake. What is this? Check it out. Check out this like little area. <laughs> this is like you're like a little dragon. You got like a couch and a TV set up here. Look at that old school TV. That's sick. Uh, I I really dig this this kind of art style. I love this. Um, the Amiga vibes of Get a Cake immediately caught my eye. Further improved on learning that this is a Metroidvania in which you can switch between any of six dragon characters on the fly, each sporting their own unique abilities. Husband and husband developers, uh, Flannel Bear, describe it as being a game about dragons and cake, the latter seemingly making up a lot of the land of uh, Sugria, in a way that made me think of James Pond, although there's no sign yet that any of the dragons can stretch their tummies 50 stories high. Huh. Throw that one in here to take a look at later. Love Metroidvanias. Nomori. Still very early in development, Nomori is a puzzle game in which you have to manipulate both time and space. This means a lot of walking on the walls, rotating the contents of portals, and getting really rather dizzy in what looks to be a very cute 3D world. Nomori. Yeah. Cool. The Night Witch. Super Mega Team, out this year sometime. Ready for some indie game bingo? The Night Witch is a Metroidvania adventure shoot 'em up deck builder. What? House. It also looks uh, lovely, a bit bullet hellish, a bit Ori like. Somehow, uh, some Slay the Spire card action in there, and it even promises moral choices. Team 17 have nabbed this to publish, so it'll maybe eventually get a bit more press than most listed here, but this is instantly on my wish list. What is this? The Night Witch. Dude, that sounds awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, this looks cool. Nice.
Four more. Death Grip Alpha uh, teaser. It's Pod Racer, isn't it? And goodness knows that's not that's no bad. Oh, dude, you know who would love this? Uh, Queen Guinevere is always talking trash about how good uh, she is at some um, Star Wars Pod Racer. <laughs> this might be right up uh right up queen guinevere's alley uh death grip as it's rather brashly styled describes itself as a sci-fi combat racer focused on exhilarating speeds and challenging tracks so like i say it's pod racer but new and modern and very shiny hmm. i'm gonna have to send this to uh queen guinevere what is it death grip Oh yeah, look at that. Cool. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to send that to Queen. That's that's her her jam her jam was the old N64 I think uh pod racer game, right? I think. Uh That looks neat. That looks neat. Resuffer. Psychosis Resolve. Uh, have you noticed that sometimes a game's description reads like an accusation at a war crimes tribunal? Uh, Resuffer is an action roguelite where you venture through psychedelic circles, cycles, excuse me, try to survive crushingly difficult, ever-changing chambers, fight hallucinatory bosses, and smooth talk your inner demons into reshaping your entire experience. Good gravy, and then I'm waterboarded. <laughs> wow. Uh, but looking at the video above, this incredibly oppressive sounding experience appears properly interesting. There's a demo if you're intrigued too. Huh. Nice. The God Unit. What? Developer Cat Floor Studio. It's out now. Since Portal, there have been, of course, uh, dozens of similar puzzle games where you have a tool designed for manipulating objects in the world and a bunch of puzzle chambers from which to escape. And yet, I don't tire of them. The God Unit is by a one-person team based out of uh, Kiev, Ukraine. Nice. Which, frankly, is more than enough reason to throw money at him right now. Others include this uh, being a game in which you manipulate the mass of cubes combined with other abilities in order to solve tricky puzzles in a world about to reach apocalypse. Huh. Cool. Outcore desktop adventure. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Developer Dr. Shinobi, out quarter three of this year, uh, looks so spectacularly messed up. A game that appears to live on your Windows desktop using pre-installed Windows apps to solve problems where you're tasked with recovering a female character's missing memories by finding files on your PC. One of my all-time favorite games, One Shot, did an amazing job of meddling with Windows to incredible effect. So I'm really intrigued to see how much further Outcore can take this. Although looking at the trailer, also of note, the game's store page mentions, experience a story with the worst characters ever written. Nice. How many more? This is going to be the last one right here for the indie games. No. I guess that was it. Yeah. Last is check out these other slideshows. So we're not doing that. But cool. Cool. A uh, little bit of indie game stuff there, right? We love indie games, man. So, uh, actually, let me pull that back up. Just in case you missed the link before, here it is again. Um, take a look at some of those indie games if, if they looked interesting, okay? Support those indie devs, baby. Uh, Diablo Immortal reportedly won't be released in Belgium or the Never Netherlands because of loot boxes. Okay. Both countries have laws against randomized loot boxes in-game. Diablo Immortal arrives later this week on mobile devices and somewhat unexpectedly PC in an open beta that was revealed in April. Unless you like in Belgium or the... I think this is supposed to be live. Unless you live in Belgium or the Netherlands, that is, in which case you won't have access to the game legitimately, at least. Problem appears to be related to loot boxes and specifically laws against them in those countries. 
Dutch gaming site Tweakers uh, reported that a few days after Diablo Immortal pre-registration went live in the App Store and Google Play, it was disabled in Belgium and the Netherlands. Excuse me, the Netherlands. An Activision Blizzard rep told the site the removal was related to the current operating conditions for games in those countries. The matter was further clarified by a message shared on the Diablo Immortal subreddit, reportedly from a Blizzard support agent. Unfortunately, players in the Netherlands and Belgium will not be able to install Diablo Immortal due to the country's gambling restrictions, it says. The loot boxes in the game are against the law in your country, so unless gambling restrictions change the game, will not be released in the Netherlands and Belgium. Uh, the message also warns that it's illegal for citizens of Belgium and the Netherlands to download the game from a different country, and even if you don't get busted for your scoff, scoff, scoff law ways, you might get banned, although in similar situations in the past where RNG loot boxes were against the law in certain countries, we did not ban any players for it, the rep added. Belgium and the Netherlands have taken much stronger stances against loot boxes in video games than most other countries. In 2018, Valve disabled the ability to open CSGO cases in order to stay in compliance with gambling regulations in those countries, and not long after that, Blizzard removed paid loot boxes from Overwatch and Heroes of the Storm in Belgium. In 2020, Electronic Arts was hit with a uh, 10 million euro, 10.8 million dollar fine U.S., over FIFA loot boxes in the Netherlands. Although that decision was overturned earlier this year, I've reached out to Activision Blizzard for more information and will update if I receive a reply. All right. Uh, a bit extreme. You mean uh, the fact that those countries have banned? Is that what you're getting at, Mr. Overthinker, specifically? Because, I mean, we can have a conversation about this for sure. It's an appropriate one absolutely just looking uh for exactly yeah okay so um it's basically gambling right <clears throat> that's what it is and that's where uh it's 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 a it's gambling in video games yeah and that's the way i mean really that's way that's what gotcha games are too right uh it's not a loot box scenario, but you're still gambling on spending money quite often. Most gotcha games, you can generate an amount of in-game currency without spending money, but uh, that's where they get you, right? And the loot boxes are virtually the same thing. Uh, they present the player with the opportunity to, um, you know, obtain these loot boxes. If you want to keep doing it, you've got to pay money, right, to get these loot boxes. And and it's a way of um, gambling, and it, it, it's 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 a rush kind of thing, right? That's, that's what gambling in Vegas is as well, whatever kind of gambling, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, it's um, – and there are just there are countries in the world at the core of this there there are countries in the world that uh have strict laws against gambling right and and uh whichever way you look at it that's what it is it, it's gambling in these games and um there are an amount of people in the world that are addicted to gambling right and so um, what you'll find is that they can't quit buying these, these loot boxes and stuff like that. Right. And they can't quit buying loot boxes. They can't quit, uh, purchasing currency to do the, the gotcha pools for the characters and stuff. Uh, so well, this isn't banned in our country as well, because even here on Twitch, we can't gamble our points. What do you mean? You can't gamble your points. Sure you can. You can roulette the points right now in this chat. <laughs> oh, we've had so many people lose all their points. <laughs> Is that what you're talking about? Like your channel points? Yo, Pinky. Big win, dude. Easy, Pinky. What's up, buddy? You mean, oh, on the predictions?
Oh really? So 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 you can't you can't do predictions, Overthinker? Really? Because of the uh, the country in which you're located, really? I didn't know that. I mean, it makes sense. Really? Oh, weird, huh? Yeah, I had no idea. I mean, I just never thought of it. You know, I never thought of it. I mean, um, it it is definitely quite often thought of a very as a very kind of scammy way to pull in people and get them hooked to doing uh that mechanic right whether it be loot boxes or, or gotcha pulls or whatever um it, it, it's quite often thought of that way and i can see it being an issue for a lot of people um some people it doesn't affect it doesn't affect but there's an amount of people in the world that definitely have gambling addictions and and uh they get sucked into that kind of mechanic right so uh it's, it's, it's a, there are going to be people that feel, uh, different ways about that situation. I am not a person that personally, uh, I, I don't deal with like, uh, that, you know, that need to, to like, I can play a gotcha game and I don't, I don't ever have to spend money on it, you know? Um, I, I've never felt that compulsion to just gamble. It, it, it's not something that inherently is, is part of my personality, right? And so, but I do know people, I've known people that do and um, how it can be a, a, a definite issue for those people. And I think for those countries that have laws against it, it's a way of them trying to protect people against these mechanics that uh, can be very, very addictive, yeah? And can have a, a detrimental effect on uh, their lives because they can't help themselves, yeah? Um, yeah, I mean, look, I even grew up in a place where uh, we, we had a good amount of, like, casino type locations and, and, and you know um and i'm not talking about vegas or anything like that but um you know it's very easy to just go i mean you can't get you can't do it until you're 18 but as soon as you're 18 you go in there and do whatever you want you know gambling wise you know and uh luckily i've just never been one of those people that that had that uh compulsion to to gamble um I mean, like, even to the extent uh, my wife and I went on a cruise a number of years ago, and they always have, you know, cruises have, like, slot machines and gambling on them and stuff. All we did was take a $20 bill just for fun and, like, threw it in a machine and, and you know, did some slots, and 20 was gone, and we left. You know, it's, it's uh, but there, <clears throat> again, I feel fortunate to be that way. There are a lot of people that don't. A lot of people have have issues with it and I think it's just a way for for governments to try to protect people from uh, losing themselves in that kind of mechanic um, people are gonna feel different ways about a government organization um, regulating their ability to uh, do what they want with their money as well right there are going to be an amount of people that feel like that is not a, a government's right to tell them that they can't gamble their money away if they want to gamble their money away. Ultimately, I think the government looks at it as a way to uh, protect them, but the individual themselves probably won't look at it that way, right? It's a tough situation. It is. <clears throat> uh, so I, I don't know what to tell you about it, really. Uh, this has been an issue throughout the gaming community for a long time. And CSGO has been at the forefront of it for a long time. Going to a site where you can gamble uh, Team Fight uh, or Team Fortress 2 items. Deposited items worth 10 bucks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kappa, yeah. Yo, Pinky, I don't know if you, uh, if you heard me announce it, but I think we're done with Lost Art content. Um, so... 
I kind of came to the realization over the past couple of days because I I couldn't I, I wasn't able to play games, so I was just thinking about games and stuff like that. And and um, I think uh, I think we're done with the uh, Lost Ark content. Anybody else that's hanging out too, uh, I think Lost Ark weekends are done. I think they're finished. So I think what we might be trying to do is to pivot into some uh, other community-based games. We'll play like Jackbox, maybe try to get Mario Kart stuff going if anybody wants to play Mario Kart. Uh, we'll find a bunch of different games to try to play together, but I think the Lost Ark content's finished. Yeah, it doesn't, uh, I love the game. I had a lot of fun with it. I've been wanting to play an MMO for a long time, but it doesn't feel like something uh, a lot of the community are still interested in. So uh, seems appropriate to just be finished with it. Yeah. So we'll move on. We'll find other things to do. We'll talk about it as a community. Uh, find what kind of, uh, I think weekends, having weekend community uh, games is, is uh, something that is on the top of my mind to try to do as uh, something different as opposed to what we do Monday through Friday, you know. And so we'll try to come up with a lot of cool games to play together, maybe online and stuff like that. But I think Lost Ark's finished. Um, so... Yeah, I don't know. It's 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 again. It's it's one of those tough situations, and it. But it's been going on this this controversy about whether governments should be regulating this. Uh, you know, infringing on what people would consider their right to uh, spend their money the way they want. You know, it's it's been something going on for a long time, and I mean, how do you guys feel about it? Do you feel like a government should regulate that kind of thing or it should be uh, just up to the individual themselves? I'll go and go ahead and start moving on to the next uh, article here while we discuss this, but um, that's a tough one. I think it's easy. I think it's easier for people that don't have any kind of issue with gambling to say it, you know, it, it should be up to the person. Probably, but Anybody that's dealt with an addiction like that, um, that can't really help themselves and is, I, I would say, especially somebody in recovery for somebody that's trying to, uh, help them selves not indulge in a, that addictive kind of, uh, thing that appeals to their personality. Um, having a bit of help from the government say, we're just not going to allow this here is probably something they're, they, uh, feel fortunate about but I don't know that that's a, a uh, the way the majority of people would feel about it either um, let me know what you think we'll keep talking about it I'm gonna go ahead and dive into this article blue ocean gaming teams up with spearhead studios um, blue ocean gaming leading online casino platform provider and content aggregator is pleased to announce a newly established partnership with premium slots developer uh, Spearhead Studios. Spearhead Studios' entire portfolio will be made available to a wide network of Blue Ocean gaming clients. Spearhead Studios' proprietary collection of 100 plus titles, including top hits such as John Daly, Spin It and Win It, 15 Armadillos, or Book of Souls Remastered, is set to delight players in global markets. Spearhead Studios is the latest addition to Blue Ocean Gaming's uh, casino aggregator, Game Hub. So here we go, more gambling stuff, right? Uh, I mean, this is a this is this just goes right along with it. I mean, uh, this legitimate like online uh, gambling, yeah, yeah. No, no. I mean, it, it's a tough thing to wrap your head around. Yeah, and there's a lot of controversy just on this platform on Twitch uh, from a lot of broadcasters and streamers and stuff like that, and how they feel about uh, some of the especially more popular. Because look, there's some very very popular streamers out there um, that uh do a lot of gambling uh casino spending real life money on casino uh games right they do they do sponsored streams too uh there's been an amount of content that's come out about these sponsored streams they do and and um to the to the extent of them being even rigged to uh have the streamer win uh to show the community that, uh, or to show their, their viewer base. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy goat. What a great name. What a great name. Daily reminder. You look lovely as well, my friend. 
<laughs> What's up, crazy goat? Hey, welcome in. Welcome in. Thank you. Thank you. I don't feel like I look lovely. I'm recovering from being sick, but you look amazing, crazy goat. What's up, my friend? Um, so it, it's, uh, it's kind of a controversial, controversial kind of thing. I mean, all the way around, whether you're talking about loot boxes or gotcha games or even legitimate, uh, like gambling casino type sites that you can spend money on, you know, it, all the way around. And it's, it's been a very, very, uh, hot topic across, uh, Twitch as a platform as well, where some content creators think that it, you know, should be banned. Um, because it's, it sets unrealistic, unrealistic expectations quite often to the audience in showing, uh, somebody that has just an immense amount of capital to put a ton of money into those, those, uh, gambling sites. And when they win, they win big, right? And it's unrealistic for the majority of people, uh, sets a bad precedence, right? About, uh, what to expect when you do those kinds of games. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh, a lot of people have a lot of different opinions about it. I think that where it gets really bad is regarding the potential for uh, these sponsored streams to be rigged in a way that shows the content creator, the broadcaster, uh, winning, where it's rigged for them to win, to make it look like, to set that, that expectation for anybody else to come on their site and spend money and that they're going to win as well. Uh, there's no doubt that has happened. I don't think it happens every time or anything, but, uh, yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is to be honest. It's, it's a, uh, it's, it's a, it's a tough situation telling people, uh, that they can't spend their money the way they want to, right? That it gets people riled up. My rights, you're infringing on my rights. You know what I mean? So um, it's just, it's kind of ironic that we went from, uh, you know, the Diablo Immortal being, uh, banned in Belgium and in the Netherlands because of loot boxes into another, you know, gambling type of, of article here, but it, it is very, very prevalent in what we need to be thinking about and addressing regarding, you know, how games are being developed and, and the kind of influence that broadcasters have on audiences as well. You know, uh, in my opinion, broadcasters should, you know, be doing everything they can to protect their audience, and but not every broadcaster feels that way, right? That's why I feel like it's very uh, important for us to have these kinds of discussions. Um. I'm not going to try to tell any of you how you should be spending your money, but I would prompt people to be very careful. Yeah. Um, no matter what, you know, you're, you're indulging in, if, if it's in a, a gambling scenario, just be careful and, and don't lose yourself. That's what I would say. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough. And it's important for us to, to continue to have these conversations as things progress in our uh, in the industry, we love video games, right? But there's definitely this this whole other side of things that has come about within the past five to ten years, you know, regarding uh, how prevalent ga uh, gambling has become within the games. Spearhead Studios is the latest addition to Blue Ocean Gaming's casino aggregator, Game Hub. The solution provides access to more than 90 game providers, 7,000 plus casino games, and a vast number of additional features such as automated game catalog, free round uh, appy. Jackpot feed and more. Matthias Larson, <coughs> excuse me, guys, I'm sorry. Uh, Managing director of Spearhead Studio says, "We welcome the new partnership with Blue Ocean Blue Gaming. Our fast-growing games portfolio will soon be available via their solution, Game Hub. I'm confident that players will enjoy our localized content, and we're keen on continuing to release many exciting titles." Nina uh, Yellen, Yellen. It's like. Jogging, it's jogging. The J is silent. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I try to, uh, I try, I try to really 
drive home that because I, I feel I feel very strongly about that that sentiment as well, Mr. Overthinker. That, um, and it doesn't matter. It that that's things in life, right? Things in life, uh, whether it be playing video games or, you know, um, indulging in in, um, maybe alcohol use or 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 gambling or what I mean anything in life can be catastrophic if you don't understand how to incorporate it in your lifestyle in moderation right um, there are so many things in life whether it be literally addictive uh, substances or just um, the thing that we love video games right if, if you don't know how to how to consume it in moderation incorporate it into your lifestyle that doesn't prevent you, you know, from taking care of responsibilities and yourself and your loved ones and things like that. It can be catastrophic, right? And so, uh, but I think that's that's that that issue that we're talking about is there are people that can't. Um, people that there are a lot of people in the world that just are not good at understanding when to stop consuming. Uh, whatever it may be that that has a grip on them in their in their life yeah and so uh i think that's where the governments quite often feel like they need to step in and just remove that from uh the potential remove the potential from certain people's lives uh in order to help them maintain a healthy lifestyle right um the issue is it's really good for those people that don't know how to um, regulate that in their lifestyles. And uh, opposite of that, it makes people that are good at regulating it feel like their rights are being infringed on, right? So it's very difficult. It's very difficult. Um, I don't, again, know what the solution is, but I think it's a very good thing that we continue to address and think and talk about that kind of situation. You know, um, marketing manager at Blue Ocean Gaming uh, comments: We are thrilled to welcome Spearhead Studios to our Game Hub family. Always searching for fresh and memorable content like the one provided by Spearhead Studios. Their high quality and localized casino games offer a great fit for our wide network of clients in many markets. And I mean, here's the thing to, to uh, consider as well. You know. The people that run these kinds of corporations are not the ones that usually partake and have an issue, right? They're the ones that understand um, how lucrative it can be and how they, they know that there are people that have an issue with gambling, right? But they're not the ones that usually, you know, have the issue themselves. Um, so that's a whole nother spin on it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree, Pinky. I agree. I, I don't, I think, I don't think that's a, a, uh, a terrible way to go about addressing the situation for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but I mean, then th as easy as that sounds, that, that opens a whole new can of worms, right? Uh, of having some kind of government organization that is in charge of regulating and maintaining a, a close eye on on what is that amount, right? And it's going to be different across the all different uh, variations of, uh, you know, how many loot boxes can you open, you know, within a set amount of time? How many how many gotcha pulls can you do over a set amount of time? And, and uh, how many slot pulls, <laughs> or how much money can you spend? Is that what it is? Is it a threshold? I mean, it's, it's uh, I think you're on the right track for sure. And again, I don't know what the solution is. But um, then the, the issue, the reason I say that is because the issue it's going to present is you're, you're going to, again, have people that go, well, that's not enough, right? I don't have an issue. That's not enough for me. I want more. Yeah, you're just never going to please everybody. But I think that's the thing is trying to come about some kind of, uh, you know, solution that 
is considered to be overall good. Truth. Uh, that's truth too. I mean, uh, we talk about that a lot is that the internet provides anonymity. Yeah. And um, unless things are being tracked through like, now tracked through an IP, something like that, or you have to actually uh, have some way to confirm that you are a like a real person, right? And you can only have, I, mean, I don't know what the solution is. Yeah, I know, I know, Pinky, I know, I know. But I'm just saying, they would have to figure out some way to regulate it, right? They would have to figure out some way to regulate it uh, by putting a limit, yeah? And it, that's all I was getting at, is that um, I wouldn't want to be in charge of that. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't want to be in charge of that. Um, so, what, what, what are those limits, yeah? What are those limits? What, what, what is a reasonable limit? And, um, that's all I was getting at. That's all I was getting at. But I agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah. Because those people that do have an issue are always going to go. It's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. Right. Um, so it, it's a weird situation. It is. It really is. Um, but yeah, I mean, spoof accounts are, are, um, would be an issue. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's the same thing that like, in a way, what China's dealing with right now, they've put regulations out there that anybody under 18 can only play like what? A few hours of online games each week? Something like that? How are they regulating that though? You know, what What are they doing about spoof accounts? Same kind of situation. Um, we've read just a little bit about it, but I'm not sure totally, you know. It's a weird situation. It really is. Uh Shut your mouth. June 2022 have uh, seemingly leaked online. Wait, 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 what? Oh, as, sorry, I missed an entire sentence there. As have become increasingly common, the PlayStation Plus free video games for June have seemingly leaked online ahead of an official reveal. Um, did we already read some of this? According to the leak, PlayStation Plus Essential, which is the new baseline tier of PS Plus following the merge of PlayStation Now into the service, and above will include three different video games for free starting on June 7th. Is that what it is? Yeah, I mean, I, I figured it had to be some kind of a legitimate identifying uh, situation, right? Um, I was going to attribute it to something similar to like social security numbers, which is what we have in the US, right? Uh, you have a social security number that you're tied to whenever you're born. And that is like your unique identifier. Yeah, each individual within the U.S. has a social, a social security number. And that's like one of your main unique identifiers separating you from anybody else. That's what I assumed. It's something uh, along the lines of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Borrow IDs, but it's a way, yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is a, a, a sketchy kind of way. Metal, what's up, buddy? You know, I'm actually out of job right now, but well, I got a drink left. What's up, buddy? <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of what I was thinking too. The thing that's sketchy about that is like, then you're using that information to log into an online environment where if that gets hacked, uh, especially for us here in the U.S., your social security number ties you to that's like your identity, man. And somebody gets a hold of that information, uh, they can literally steal your identity, you know. And um, it presents other issues. Stood, stayed up way too late last night, suffering the consequences. You know, all I have done over the past two days is is sleep. Like my left ear, guys, sounds like there's water stuck in it, and there's not. <laughs> like I have got so much like uh congestion in my head and everything still it's terrible i haven't been sick like this in a long time i am feeling better obviously yeah i'm, I'm here i'm feeling better uh we'll see how long we make it today but i i've literally just slept like the past two days uh i i haven't i've hardly left my my bedroom man i've just been in bed the whole time 
Um, just splitting headache, sore throat, lots of like congestion and drainage. Like I said, my ear feels all messed up right now. Uh, slept in one hour intervals. Ugh, it's terrible. I actually slept the best last night I have since, uh, since I got sick. So that I think helped a lot with getting up this morning and getting going with stream. Yeah. Um, yeah, that sounds terrible metal. I'm sorry, buddy. It's good to see you though, dude. <laughs> so, uh, I just announced, um, sleep donation. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, I think we're done with lost art content metal weekend. Lost art content. I think is finished. Uh, we're going to move on to some other stuff. Try to get a lot of like community gaming in and stuff, that, which was what Lost Ark was for a while. Uh, but it, it feels like it's gotten to a point where it's just me playing and, and nobody's really interested in playing together anymore or anything. So Lost Ark's finished, I think. Uh, so let's see here. Um, more specifically, the leak comes from Area Jagonis. And claims that the June 2022 PlayStation Plus free video games will be God of War, Naruto to Baruto, Shinobi Striker, and Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. Why, uh, while Area Jigones is, is not the source of the most recent 100% accurate PlayStation Plus leaks, has been right on the money in the past, so there's no reason to doubt it's not accurate this time around as well. The usual leaker of late, uh, Bill, Bill Kuhn, over at Dill Labs, is apparently intending to leak the list tomorrow with the expectation being that PlayStation itself will officially announce June's list on June 1st. Uh, the new tiered version, which would be tomorrow. So the new tiered version of PS plus and PlayStation plus essential, uh, has already begun rolling out globally while nor with North America specifically set to have the new tiered service on June 13th. PS plus essential, the lowest tier of the new service is exactly the same as what PS plus currently offers with a different name. Higher tiers, PS Plus Extra, and Premium will include further benefits like classic game catalog and more. As noted above, if the leak is accurate, June's PS Plus video games are God of War, Naruto to Baruto, and Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. Actual announcement should be in the coming days. Won't be long to wait in order to confirm the June list. Um... May's free PS Plus games, which were uh, FIFA 22, Tribes of Midgard, and Curse of the Dead Gods, are currently available and run through June 6th. Alright, there you go. Well, that's rumor mill, but uh, probably a good amount of stock to go along with that. So, BM BPM weekends? We could do a little bit of BPM on the weekends, yeah. We could... Well, yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed Lost Ark. I really did. And, or I have. I've really been enjoying it. But it's a very grindy game. And, and as far as that's concerned, I mean, <clears throat> I do, f I, I have started to feel an amount of what we talk about quite often regarding games like that is that, that need to be in there, that need to get things done and to progress. And, and, um, I can tell that slowly over time, uh, less people are playing the game with us to the point of basically not many of the community playing anymore at all. And for me, that's important. Yeah. Um, I had a great time in Lost Ark. And, uh, but if it's not something that is appealing to the community anymore, there's no point, really. Um, obviously, I want to play games that are fun to me, but I want to play games that are uh, fun for all of us as well, right? Whether people in the community are participating or just viewing. And um, with that in mind, it's just come to the, you know, I've started to realize that we probably need to move on from Lost Art. And uh, I mean, I, I considered myself casual too, uh, which is why I only played it on the weekend. But it's starting to feel like uh, it's time to move on. It just started to feel like it's time to move on. And um, I think maybe for the time being, instead of doing Lost Ark, we play Jackbox. We uh, maybe play some Garfield Kart or some Mario Kart or 
Uh, Fall Guys is going to be free before long. Maybe we can all get on and start playing some Fall Guys together or something. I don't know. I don't know. Um, maybe we, we'll get into some, like, uh, FPS, multiplayer FPS stuff uh, for a little bit and see what that's about. Have some fun with that. We'll figure it out. We'll find some games and um, just have a good time and, and find something to pivot to that is going to be more interesting for uh, the community as a whole, right? So it just seems like a, a good time to go ahead and pivot, be done with Lost Ark. I've enjoyed it. I have. I've enjoyed it very much. But as with most MMOs, um, it's very grindy and, and uh, it does – start to feel like a bit of a job uh, to an extent, yeah? And so I think that's where it started to feel. It started to feel to people like a job instead of just having some fun playing games together and stuff. So um, we'll pivot. We'll figure it out. And maybe a little bit of BPM on the weekends, yeah, for sure. I really enjoyed playing BPM on the anniversary stream, even though I ruined two runs that should have succeeded. Um, so we'll see. We'll just see. We'll talk about it. We'll figure it out. Uh, here's another. Here's another. Uh, report blasts manipulated. There's a there's a lot of loot box issues right now. Yeah, articles. Uh, report blasts manipulative video game loot boxes. We've talked about this a lot already. I'm just going to read through this real quick and see what it has to say. Um, consumer groups in 18 European countries have backed a report calling gaming loot boxes ex exploitative. Exploitative. Excuse me. The contents of the virtual boxes are only revealed through either gameplay or by making a payment. While some contain useful tools or desirable extras which improve the experience, others are worthless. The report authors uh, the Norwegian Consumer Council say gamers are being manipulated into spending large sums of money on the chess. Uh, games publisher EA has previously compared loot boxes to children's toys, hatch animals, or uh, Kinder Surprise. Yeah. Um, Games publisher EA has previously... Yeah, yeah, we just read that. Sorry. Critics say the loot boxes are a form of gambling because players cannot see what they have actually bought until after they have paid to open the content. And it's very RNG-based, right? The more... Uh, the way loot boxes always work is the more... Uh, useful or the more... Um, wanted the item is across the board the less chances you have of obtaining that item in the box right um finn mirstad director of digital policy at the ncc said the sale and presentation of loot boxes often involve exploiting customers through predatory mechanisms fostering addiction targeting vulnerable co consumer groups and more the report is backed by 20 consumer groups in the 18 countries which are all calling for governments to take action through regulation this includes the european consumer organization which represents consumers in Europe, including those in the UK. To report, the report says it ob appears obvious the systems used to convince people to part with their money in games are predatory, manipulative, and exceedingly aggressive. It adds that these problems are exacerbated by the fact that some of the games containing loot boxes are targeted at children. Banned in Belgium. A debate around whether loot boxes constitute gambling. In 2018, the Belgian Gaming Commission ruled that they were in violation of gambling legislation, which led to popular series FIFA dropping its virtual currency in the, in the region. That effectively means loot boxes can only be earned by playing the game's ultimate team mode. Netherlands then came to the same conclusion in 2019, hitting FIFA's publisher EA with a 10 uh, million pound, 8.5 million euro, right? Or no, 10 million euro, 8.5 million pound, excuse me, fine. The decision was overturned in March 2022 when a court found that EA had not broken the law and rescinded the fine. It said loot boxes in FIFA, which contain digital versions of actual football players who can then play for FIFA gamers' teams, add an element of chance to the ultimate team mode, but that they only form part of a broader game of skill. Now, what FIFA or what EA also does, if you guys are not familiar with what these, uh, it's they they call it like football ultimate team or hockey ultimate team or you know uh, they do it in all their games. They these ultimate team situations where uh, even whenever you receive those players in the packs, 
the players' contract have contracts on them that expire as well. So you have to keep buying these packs to get contract extenders and stuff like that. Um, it, it's like a never-ending thing, these ultimate team modes that EA has incorporated, right? Um, Kerry Hopkins said, we do think the way that we have implemented these kinds of mechanisms, and FIFA, of course, is our big one. Our FIFA Ultimate Team and our packs is actually quite ethical and quite fun, quite enjoyable to people. <laughs> but the same year, Fortnite maker Epic Games decided to let players in its hit video game see what was inside its llama loot boxes before deciding whether to buy them. In the UK, there are plans to introduce a review into whether gambling regulation is fit for the digital age. Loot boxes are set to form part of this, with the House of Lords Gambling Committee saying in 2020 loot boxes should be firmly regula regulated as games of chance, quote-unquote games of chance. A spokesperson said the review into this is due in the coming weeks. Again, uh, we've talked about it a lot this morning, and, and that just, uh, there's a little bit more on it. Um, so, last article uh, for the morning, for the news section, unless anybody else has anything else they want to talk about, okay? Uh, or pertinent news that I missed, anything like that. I have been gone the past two days, so there's quite possible some stuff you guys have come across that I haven't seen, so let me know. Blizzard boss says Warcraft 3 Reforged news is coming after a year of silence. The game suffered a dismal release in 2020. Promised improvements haven't happened. President of Blizzard Entertainment has stated that there will be new information on Warcraft 3 Reforged in June. The remaster of the 2002 strategy game was released on PC in January 2020 and attracted widespread criticism for it from its fan base, resulting in it becoming the worst user-scored game ever on Metacritic at the time. Wow. Blizzard promised in a blog post in May 2020 that it would be working towards a roadmap to fix the game's issues. But just a few months later, it stopped releasing updates. Now Blizzard president Mike Barra has stated on Twitter that new information will be coming next month. When asked by a Twitter follower, uh, when asked by a Twitter followed if there was any news from the, I think it was follow, supposed to be follower, if there was any news from the Warcraft 3 Reforged team, Ibarra simply answered, you'll hear from them soon in June. Warcraft 3 Reforged featured overhauled character models and environments, as well as integration with the Battle.net Battle .net platform. I'm sorry, guys. However, the final game had none of the revamped cutscenes shown during its original announcement. Some visual improvements, such as shader and lighting elements, were seemingly missing. Uh, the re-release also lacked many social features from the 2002 original, including support for clans and ladders. Player Backlash forced Blizzard to remove refund limits uh, from for the game, allowing players to reclaim refunds if they felt the game did not, quote, quote, not provide the experience they wanted. Blizzard released a patch for the game a couple of weeks after launch, then posted an update in May 2000, promising more improvements were coming. After a challenging launch, we've been regrouping for two years, listening to your feedback, prioritizing the things we need to do for the game, and building a plan to deliver on our next steps, it said at the time. However, the game's last patch came in April 2021 with many promised features still yet to be implemented and a Bloomberg report in July 21 claimed that Classic Games, the team that worked on Reforge, had been dismantled. <laughs> Blizzard. Man. A, a far cry from the, uh, the developer that so many of us fell in love with such a long time ago, isn't it? It's such a shame. I mean, this is not the only developer to end up that way, right? But, goodness gracious, uh, it just feels so bad to see that happen all the time, you know? Um, these these developers that we fall in love with uh, initially because of the, the great games they create and, and then just... <laughs> right, 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 Pinky. Uh, I mean, again, that's why we love our indie devs, right? Uh, there's so many great indie devs out there that the reason they create great games is because they love great games. They're so uh, focused on creating great content 
uh, because they're passionate about the work they do and they're passionate about us as gamers, right? And uh, that's why we love so many of our, our, our indie devs. Uh, not that every dev that has gotten big has completely lost sight of that fact, but most of them seems like anymore, right? And Blizzard is no exception, that's for sure. Um, they they turned into a basically abysmal um, developer, as far as I'm concerned. Blizzard has not been Blizzard of old for a long, long time now. And uh, I'm actually glad to see Microsoft purchasing them and hopefully turn around their their uh, toxic, horrible, apparently uh, culture within that organization. And uh, hopefully we'll take some of those IPs and, and you know that Blizzard Activision's been holding on to for such a long time and uh, we'll revamp them and bring us uh, some good new content. I don't think it was going to come from from Blizzard Activision and the, the current state of that organization. I just don't. Um, but that'll be news for today, guys. Uh, nobody, I don't think anybody had anything else. So, uh, we'll, we'll work our way towards, uh, our gaming content of Valheim and, uh, which feels like years since I've played it, since I've been uh, gone the past two days. But, uh, let me shout everybody out again and just say thank you so much for, um, you know, wishing me, uh, you know, rest and recovery uh, while I was gone the past couple of days. You guys are amazing, and and uh, it feels so bad to be gone, but it feels so great to know that uh, everybody is so understanding and in, in this amazing community of of uh, why I needed to be gone and rest up and everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we has iron mining to do. I know, Varya. I'm sorry. We're gonna we're gonna get to it right now. Um, so thank you guys again just for being an amazing community and uh, such supportive uh, people in general. You guys are awesome. Um, on that note, we'll be done with news for today. Um, I will have this uploaded to YouTube later. So if you are viewing this on YouTube and you didn't get to see it live, uh, consider maybe trying to come hang out with us at 6 a.m. Central uh, Standard Time every single day when we do these news segments before we hit our gaming content, okay? And at the same time, if you are seeing this on YouTube, uh, do me a favor, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Maybe leave me a comment so we can have a bit of discussion over some of the topics we went over today, okay? On that note, we will go ahead and move on to gaming. And um, I don't know, if you are viewing it as a video on YouTube, then uh, stay healthy, stay safe, be kind, and we will catch everybody for tomorrow's segment of video gaming news, okay?